Hello and welcome to our first image for the American Revolution. This image focuses on the events leading up to the war itself. With this in mind, this image is the path leading up to our American Revolution carousel. We'll talk more about the carousel in our American Revolution Part 2 video. For now, let's focus on the events leading up to the war. First, take a look at the kids playing on the seesaw. The seesaw is decorated with two large clams. The clam should help you remember the Proclamation of 1763. Get it? The Proclamation of 1763? This was a proclamation by the British that stated that the colonists couldn't settle west of the Appalachian Mountains. The British wanted to protect the colonists from Native American raids, but the colonists were not happy about this. Notice how the colonial kid can't get to the west side of the seesaw? It's because there's a Native American blocking him. Just associate the middle of the seesaw with the Appalachian Mountains, and you'll have the Proclamation of 1763 down. Next, take a look at the bag of sugar on the path. It's for some girl's tea party, which we'll touch on a little bit later. This bag of sugar stands for the Sugar Act, which taxed imports of sugar. This greatly upset the colonists and started the cry of, no taxation without representation. Moving along the path, we see two more kids playing. The first kid had been putting down stamps on what appears to be a big piece of paper. This stands for the Stamp Act, which the British used to tax parchment. Parchment is a type of paper, by the way. It looks like the kid has changed his mind about the stamps, though. He is now peeling up one of the stamps. This is because the Stamp Act was eventually repealed. Although the Stamp Act was repealed, it was soon replaced by the Declaratory Act. The Declaratory Act is represented by the other kid who is laying down a deck of cards. The Declaratory Act was even worse than the Stamp Act, though, as it basically said that the British could tax whatever they wanted. Next, we see another kid who seems to be smuggling some chocolate into the park. Who is he hiding his chocolate from? His mom? The British? Is there even a difference? This kid represents the Townshend Acts. In order to hide his chocolate, he had to take a letter out of the mailbox. The letter says, Send to Town, which is our recurring symbol for Townshend. The Townshend Acts taxed imports, which refers to goods made outside of the colonies. This made the goods more expensive, which the colonists were not happy about. In order to avoid these taxes, colonists began smuggling goods such as paper and tea. But the British caught on pretty quickly, so they established the Writs of Assistance. The Writs of Assistance stated that the British could search for smuggled goods without a search warrant. That's why there's a, maybe searched, sign on the mailbox. I guess this kid isn't the first person who has tried to smuggle chocolate into the park. Next, we see a colonial kid getting squirted by a water gun. This represents the Boston Massacre. Notice that the colonial kid is throwing a rock at the British. The Boston Massacre started as a protest against the British that soon got out of hand. The colonists began throwing snowballs and rocks at British soldiers. Angry, the British soldiers then opened fire on the colonists. Next, we see two kids talking to one another through tin cans and a string. These kids stand for the Committees of Correspondence. The colonists used the Committees of Correspondence to organize and communicate with one another. The Sons of Liberty were a big part of the Committees of Correspondence, which is why the kid on the other end of the string is wearing a Statue of Liberty outfit. Next, we return to the little girl who is having a tea party. But why is she dumping her tea in the water? In 1773, the British passed a tea act that forced colonists to buy British tea. In reaction, the Sons of Liberty and other Bostonians dressed up as Native Americans dumped a lot of British tea into the Boston Harbor. This little girl is wearing a Statue of Liberty outfit to represent the Sons of Liberty. She is also wearing a Native American headdress to represent how they dressed up as Native Americans during the Boston Tea Party. The little girl sure looks happy, but there's an adult in front of her who looks equally angry. Why would she waste all that tea? Notice how the man is very tall. This is because he represents the intolerable acts, which were meant to punish the colonists for the Boston Tea Party. The British closed Boston Harbor, which is represented by the tall man standing in the puddle. In other words, he is closing the puddle and preventing people from walking along the path. They also passed the Quebec Act and the Quartering Act, which were also part of the Intolerable Acts. Let's first tackle the Quebec Act, which is represented by the Catholic priest riding a quick bike. Quick bike sounds a lot like Quebec, doesn't it? This act increased the size of Quebec, which is a Canadian province. That's why there's a Canadian flag on the bike. Quebec was largely Roman Catholic, so the Quebec Act increased the prevalence of Roman Catholicism. The colonists were mostly Protestant, which is one reason the colonists opposed this act so much. To help you remember Roman Catholicism, there's a Roman Catholic priest riding the quick bike. Now let's focus on the Quartering Act. See the kid sleeping under the roof? 
There's a pile of quarters next to him, which should help you remember the Quartering Act. The Quartering Act meant that British soldiers could stay in private homes for free, which is why this kid is sleeping under the roof. Next, look at the top of the roof. See the window pane? This window pane should help you remember Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine wrote a pamphlet saying it was common sense to be independent from Britain. That's why there's a piece of paper on the window with a one cent penny on it. The penny should help you remember the word sense, and the paper should help you remember that it was a pamphlet. Thomas Paine's common sense pamphlet fired up the colonists and helped spur the spirit of the revolution. Before ending this image, I wanted to introduce one more important term. See the eagle flying over the park? This should help you remember the word egalitarianism, which means equality. Egalitarianism embodied the spirit of the revolution as the colonists saw themselves as equals to the British. This can be seen in the phrase, no taxation without representation. They thought they deserved voting rights just like the British. And that's it for the American Revolution Part 1. Now on to the American Revolution Carousel, where we'll focus on the actual revolution itself. Onward!